Stop. It's focusing on your hand, and I want to actually see the board. Maddie, jump. Stop. Or how come you never... <laughs> All right, so today, we're going to go through just a few notes today on the next section. I said I was going to introduce it today. Um, we're going to do a very light introduction. i got about two examples that I kind of want to go through on this. Then I'm going to give you time where you can actually work on your homework. Now, I know a lot of people, like, I, I had a couple that were turning yesterday on your page 289. That's great. I'm going to give you about 15, 20 minutes today to work on it, because I know it's due tomorrow, and if you have questions on it. Now, the good news is about that assignment, there's no proofs. It's just solving for x or y on your particular problem or finding a certain wall length. Um, and um, it's just focused on isosceles or equilateral triangles. It's, there's no systems, believe it or not, on any of those problems. It was, it was pretty easy. And I, I was actually really, I was pleasantly surprised by it. Because usually by the time we get to the end of the chapter, I want to make it harder and harder. That one is kind of nice. It's kind of nasty. Okay, today, we're going to be talking about the last section of chapter four, which um, this section is using the coordinate plane to talk about congruent figures, which is kind of like a full circle, because that was kind of the title of the chapter, right? Talking about how items are equal to each other. Well, today we're going to be using this chart. Now, well, our basic idea here for doing this is doing transformations. That's why I have this thing on the board. So you probably remember that from algebra class, that there's certain transformations you can do to a picture that don't really change the picture at all. Okay, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, is what can you do to an actual drawing without manipulating the size of it. And so there's, there's four actual transformations we talk about in algebra and geometry. Number one, and I'm going to put all four, but only three of these are the ones we're going to want to use. Number one is called the translation. And that'll be one of the first examples I'm going to do today. I'll explain what it is, the process for doing it. It's actually really straightforward, really easy. The second one is called the reflection. And there's actually two types of reflection. We're only going to see one of them today. We'll see the second one tomorrow. Because that, again, today is the intro. Number three is rotation. There's actually three types of rotation. We're going to really see those tomorrow. And then the fourth one is called a dilation. Dilation is by far um, the, the one that is probably the most different than all the rest of them. It's the one that most people um, don't fully understand until you'll see it in like an algebra geometry course. Um, I can show you kind of examples of what dilation means. Now, talking about the actual three out of these four that are of use, that we're going to use, are the top three. That's why I put them in that order. These three don't change a picture. The, the picture will stay the exact same size. Um, so um, why I'm bringing this up, um, I've actually mixed two sections together for this one. Um, there is an actual section 4.8 in your textbook. It was really bare minimum stuff we needed from it, so I just kind of threw it in with section 4.7. 4.7 is the majority of this transformation stuff. There was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Um, with 4.8. Um, if you think back uh, a couple of homework assignments ago, we did, a, we did a problem where you had to graph triangles, right? You had to graph the actual coordinates, figure out the length of the walls, and see if the triangles were equal to each other by using SSS. And that's right? hard. Yeah, it was hard, right? It was tough. And the trick was you're using distance formula. Well, that's what would happen here, right? That there's easy ways to actually prove that the figures are the same without doing the distance formula. And that's where this comes in. And I want to show you how we can apply like an algebra topic to actually prove that. So this is where we get in kind of drawing and stuff. So tomorrow will be more hands-on. We'll try a problem on the board. I have you try one where I hand out graph paper and some color pencils. We try one on the board. You try one with your color pencils. And then we'll try the last one. So it'll be more kind of hands-on. I'll probably have the desks all in different, different uh, setups tomorrow. That way you can try different pictures. Uh, you can move around a little bit. So it'll be kind of more of a hands-on activity tomorrow. Um, but again, today is kind of intro what we're doing. Let's start with the, the first type today. This is going to be the translation. Now, you'll have one of these tomorrow that you'll have to work with. Okay, so we're going to do a translation, and I'll explain what that means. Um, so the first thing we need is we need to picture the goal. 
so we can actually like manipulate it. So uh, the picture I'm going to use, I'm going to use a triangle A, B, and C. And the triangle here I'm going to use is negative 1 comma 1, negative 1 comma 3, and let's go with negative 7 comma negative, or let's go 7 comma 1. Okay, so this is going to be my triangle, right? So negative 1, 1, and negative 1, 3, and uh, negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. All right, so there's C, here's A, here's B. All right, so there's my little triangle. Now, what type of triangle is that? Right. The right triangle. How do you know that? Yeah, it makes a perfect L shape, right? In fact, the wall AB is perfectly perpendicular to AC because one's going vertical, one's going horizontal. So it is a right triangle. We can actually translate this to a new spot, and it stays the same picture. Translation is sliding. That's the, that's the key word that I think of. You're going to slide this picture to a new location, and it doesn't manipulate it. Like, when I move desks around, I translate them. I just slide them on the ground, put them where I need to. That's why I kind of always reposition them. Um, a chessboard is a translation. You know you're moving a piece to a new location. The piece didn't change. The size of the piece, you know, the, the rook or the knight, the horse, right? It doesn't change size when I move it. It's the same piece. It just got slid to a new location. That is a translation. Um, we can do any types of translation. So uh, let's just do one where we move. Let's go to the right. And let's go down. And I'll show you how we manipulate these coordinates. So it's a very simple process for doing that. Now, <coughs> excuse me. How far to the right do you want to move? Seven. How many? Seven. Seven. Okay. So we'll move to the right seven. How do you do that? We're going to move this direction seven. So that affects your X numbers. Because, you know, X is moving right left. That's the X, the X axis. Okay, now, how far down do we want to go? Four. Four. Okay, I'll use four. Okay. So, we're going to go down four spots. So, all we're going to do is we're going to use those two numbers, and I'm going to show you how they affect this. Now, if I want to move to the right, you know, seven spots, that's the number you came up with. Basically, what you do is you add the seven to the X number. That moves it to the right. That's a positive 7 on the axis. To move it down, you affect the y numbers, because y goes up and down. So what you do is you're going to subtract 4. That's what I'm going to do to every coordinate. And I'm going to come up with the new coordinates for them. So that's what I'm going to put over here. <coughs> this is going to be my new A, this is going to be my new B, my new C. And you can actually, um, you can actually see like how the numbers are manipulated. So, we're going to do this to both coordinates. So, how do I add a 7 to this one? Plus 7. Yeah, you add 7, and what do you get? 6. Positive 6, right? So this first coordinate will be 6. Now what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 4 from this coordinate, the y number. So 1 minus 4? Negative 3. Negative 3. There's your new coordinate. That's where A is now sitting. Okay, now we got to do B. So same exact idea. Let's add 7 to this thing. 6. 6. Let's subtract 4 from this. Negative 1. Negative 1. Okay. So we're getting the coordinates how they're moving. And same thing. Let's add 7 to this. Zero. 0. And let's subtract 4 from this. Negative 3. Okay. So now we can draw where all of these coordinates are going to go. So A is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down 3. So here's A. B is at 6, comma, oops, 6. Uh, was it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that's negative 1, so here's B. And C is at 0 right and left, down 3, so here's C. And you can, and you can definitely tell, like, the picture is the same picture. It just slid and slid down. You, do you see that it's the same size? You could have done that for that assignment we did a while back. Right? If you could actually tell, like... If you could see that they just moved it to a new location by sliding it, right? That if you looked at the X numbers and you looked at the new coordinates of the X numbers and you noticed that there was a pattern, like, oh, to go from here to there, they always added seven to get from this coordinate to that one, or this one to that one. They used the same number, or if, you know, the Y numbers, they use some value to find the Y numbers, you could actually prove that the figures are the same picture. 
because they didn't change sizes. The walls are still the same, they used the same number. If any one of these coordinates had a different pattern, now we'd have a problem. Now the pictures wouldn't be the same. You know, something moved. So now the, the walls are different sizes, potentially. Potentially, I should, I should say. Okay, any questions with the translation? We'll practice that tomorrow. Let's just slide into a new location. You can see, it doesn't manipulate the picture. The walls aren't getting bigger or smaller. It's just moving. All right, now, the, the next tip that I want to talk about. This is kind of the intro today. I want to do a reflection. We're going to do one type of reflection today. So that, this will be my, my last example. In fact, I'll use the same picture here. So I'm going to use the same ABC here. All right, now, I did, I did hint that there is two types of reflections. All right, so here's the first type that we're going to look at. Uh, the two types, there's a y-axis reflection and a x-axis reflection. Now we're going to only focus on the first one today, a y-axis. What that means is you notice where the y-axis is. This is giving me your mirror. So like if you're looking at a mirror, everything is backwards on the other side. So basically it's like if this was a page in a book and you flipped it over the, the spine of the book, the picture will be facing this direction. It's still the same picture, it's just flipped over and it's going across the y-axis. Okay, now, to how we do that, like there's an actual like setup for how you reflect items. What you do, if you're gonna change the numbers, you're gonna take each of the coordinates, and all you're gonna do is change the first one to be negative. You're gonna affect the first number, and we're gonna turn it to be the exact opposite number. So the x and y will stay where they're at, but we're going to change the first number to be the opposite sign. So let's do those coordinates. So this can be my new A, B, C. And we're going to see how it like flips over the picture. So on the first one, let's make this one the opposite. So what, what will that turn into? Positive one. Positive one, and the second number doesn't change. Oh. So the second number doesn't change. We're going to keep the same Y number no matter what you have. So if that was a negative number, keep it negative. Okay. So, same thing here, we're going to change the first number to be opposite. So we're going to change that to 1, the second number will stay the same. And now, for the last one, this one will change to be the opposite, seven. and the second number will stay the same. That's how you, and what should happen, <coughs> excuse me, geez. what should happen here is that this thing should flip all the way over. And in fact, if we actually draw it here, A is 1 comma 1, B is at 1 comma 3, and C is at 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 comma 1. And you can see that it was a perfect flip like I just showed you earlier. Now, there's the other type of reflection. Instead of going across the y-axis, we can go down. There's a reflection where it goes down this direction. So it'll be upside down. That's one, that's one we're going to look at tomorrow. And you can probably already figure out what the formula is going to be on. Okay. Questions on the different types of, uh, of different types of transformations. Okay, I'm going to stop there today. Because remember, tomorrow we're going to kind of focus on the next ones. There's actually three rotations. We'll show you those tomorrow. Um, but these don't change pictures. It's the same picture. It's just in a new location on a graph. So we can still use you know the, the proofs that we've been learning to show that they're the exact same size. All right. The uh, rest of time is yours. You have about 15 minutes today to actually work, actually about 17, to work on your page 289. If you get it done, you can turn in the basket. Uh, you can move around. Remember, all you're doing is you're finding an X and a Y, or you're trying to tell me which parts are the same, or you're trying to find a specific wall length. So don't overthink it. The rest of time is yours. <coughs>